Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Horat Drak and these are 10 tips for Hearts of Iron 4 that I found most useful. I tried to put the experience that, that I made during my veteran Let's Play um, into this video and uh, present you some tips that might help you as well. If you have any tips, uh, questions or other things that you want to tell me, please leave it in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, then please leave a like. And without any further ado, let's get to the tips. All right, so one fairly basic but very important thing is how to gain army experience. Um, if you have a look up here, you can see that we currently have 500 army experience. It is kept at 500. Um, here's our navy experience, here's our air experience. Why is it important and how do you gain it? Um, army experience is a bit more important than the other two types because you do two things with army experience. Um, one, you change your division templates over here. So if I were to remove this self-prepared artillery, I would have to pay five army experience to make that change um, happen. So that is um, the additional use of army experience. Um, the use um, that all experience types share is creating variants. So if I were to create a variant of my fighter two over here, I click in there and then go to create variant. And then I could produce a variant of that fighter with, let's say, better weapons, better weaponry. Uh, it has some downsides, it reduces the reliability, but you can balance that out and use your air experience points for that. And the good thing about creating a variant is that it, um, if you change your production line to a variant, you are going to have less um, of a production efficiency loss than if you were to change to a completely new tank. Okay, so these are the two uses. How do you gain that? Well gain it mainly mainly you gain the experience through fighting which is kind of logical but there are ways to gain it without fighting and one of them is hiring a theorist we can see that we're currently gaining 0 0.05 uh, 0 0.05 per day from heinz guderian uh, this is our military theorist is a blitzkrieg theorist you could also go for uh, an air guy and uh, you could also go for uh, a naval guy depending on what you want and what strategy um, you want to use. There are other people here as well. It is advised to get those guys fairly easily because, I mean, gaining that army experience, it really adds up, especially if you start 1936. Um, the other way that you can gain army experience is by letting your armies train. So just go towards the army and click on exercise. Now these guys are starting to to exercise. There are a couple of things that you have to know about exercising. So if you if you start recruiting your troops, they start out green. You can train them up in this screen before you deploy them up to the status of trained. Um, and if you if you exercise them, you can get them up to regular. So green troops get a penalty to uh, their combat efficiency. Regular uh, trained troops have no no penalty and no bonus. And regular troops get a 25 percent bonus in combat so it, it is um, advised that you train up your troops to regular if you're not um, currently in a war just to maybe gain an edge over your over your enemies now the downside to training is that the organization of a unit is kept at 20 percent um, organization basically works like morale in other paradox games like europa universalis or crusader kings basically determines how long your unit can fight until they have to recover from the fighting and it is fairly important to have high organization because as you can imagine if your organization is at zero and you guys can't fight anymore but your enemy can you're going to take losses that you um, might have been able to avoid so that is one downside so don't do don't let um, already fighting armies exercise that's just that's not a good idea um, the other downside to this is that they are using up equipment. I mean, they are they're shooting with their guns, they're using the artillery, um, and all that stuff breaks down with use. So you have to be prepared to replace their equipment um, at a certain rate. You can uh, have a look at that in your logistics tab, and should be able to see um, how that works. But you can see that we're now gaining 0.02 per day from these 109 divisions exercising. So that is fairly important, but uh, pretty basic. And you should know that. 
One of the most important things when designing a division is combat width. Um, if you have a look into our division designer, you can see that this infantry division has a combat width of 20. And uh, that is pretty important. Different units um, have different combat widths. So most of them have two. Um, so for example, an infantry battalion, if I were to add that, we get an additional combat width of two over here. If I were to add a tank, we gain two combat width. Um, if I were to add a an artillery, I would um, add three to the combat width. Now, why is that important? Well, only a certain amount of units can fight per province in Hounds of Iron 4. And th the base amount of units that can fight in a province is 80. 80 combat width. So if we have a look into, let's say, this battle over here, it is a fairly standard battle. We have a combat width of 80. Um, these guys are using 76 of that combat width. Our enemies over here, the um, British Raj, are using 76, while we are using 18. Oh well, <laughs> we're basically being a bit um, inefficient here. So the, the basic combat width is 80. And for every additional direction, for every additional attack direction, um, this increases by 40. So if you have a look at this battle where our troops are being attacked by uh, from that province and from that province, we have a combat width of 120. So uh, we have to defend ourselves against two sides and we can use more units over there. Um, different tactics can change the um, the battle width, um, some leaders can change the combat width, but um, you just have to know that 80 and 40 are important numbers. Uh, because if you are if you're making divisions that are not multiples of 80 and 40, you are wasting you're wasting space. You're you're wasting room that you could fill with divisions because um, divisions that would bring you over that cap will not take part in that fight. So if we had another division over here, we currently don't have any reserves, but if we had another infantry division helping in that battle, they couldn't really help us because they would put us over the cap and therefore wouldn't take part. They would just be in reserves and they wouldn't help us. So designing your, designing your, your divisions in multiples of 80 and 40 is very important. One of the strategies that can really give you an edge in Hearts of Iron 4 is combining focuses and uh, production companies to give you um, certain key technologies. So what I mean by that, if you have a look in here in our government, we do have Porsche um, or Porsche, uh, if you want to pronounce it correctly, as our tank design. And you can see that takes 10% of our armor or tank research time. Uh, which is really useful if you want to go into tanks. Now Germany does also have some national focuses that reduce research time on certain tanks. Um, if you go down the army innovation um, tree, you can see that we have the treaty with the USSR, which gives us either a reduced ahead of time penalty uh, by 100% or a 50% research bonus. Um, if, it, if this tech is not ahead of time for Panzer III, and this gives another 50% um, research bonus for um, either Panzer III, Panzer IV, Panzer V, um, the Panther, or Sonderkraftfahrzeug Elf, which is a mechanized infantry. And by um, using that and going for Leopards and Panzers IV, very early, um, I managed to get these 1941 techs in 1938 or 1939, which can really give you an edge if you have access to these guys. And even if you have access to them, uh, you still need to produce them, uh, which also takes some time. So getting certain key techs early by combining those is um, something that can that can give you an edge. Um, I, it has to be a bit general this tip because you have to know the um, focus tree of the nation that you're playing. Um, 
some nations have um, certain focuses that can that can help them. Germany has that one for the Panzers. Other other countries have um, different focuses. So if you start playing a game, just plan your research accordingly. So one strategy that has worked pretty well for me is getting a snowball effect going with civilian factories. Now, what does that mean? Um, production is divided between um, civilian factories over here. These guys do all your construction work and military factories. These guys construct all the um, military equipment that you want. Tanks and infantry equipment, all that good stuff. Now, the civilian factories, the beauty of it is that um, these guys can also construct military factories. So the more civilian factories you have, the faster you will be able to produce military factories. And you can see that 15 civilian factories can, a max of 15 civilian factories can be used to build one thing. So currently these 15 factories are building one anti-air facility in uh, a Belgian uh, province. Now the thing is, if you if you start pumping out civilian factories early, you will then be able to build more military factories um, at a certain point. If you if you switch from producing civilian factories to military factories, and you might be faster and have more military factories than if you had ignored civilian factories completely and went uh, went to build military factories from the get go, from let's say a 1936 start. So. Consider building civilian factories first, at least for some time to um, give you an edge in producing producing more military factories. Also keep in mind you can always switch civilian factories to military factories if you go on towards the conversion. Uh, and I click on that, I can convert one military factory to one civilian factory. It could also do the different thing, you know, which is mainly what you want at a certain point. Convert one civilian factory to one military factory. And also keep in mind um, there are two different types of buildings, the um, state buildings that do not um, share building slots and uh, the shared buildings uh, like military factories and civilian factories. So if I build, um, let's say, a civilian factory in here in Bohemia, um, or a military factory over here, then I can't build a civilian factory anymore because we have maxed out the, the building slots in there. So. That is something to keep in mind. But yeah, getting getting um, your civilian factory production going early on can pay big time later. One important thing if you go for synthetic um, refineries to produce your oil is that the um, synthetic refinery research over here, the synthetic oil research, does not increase the efficiency of the synthetic refinery buildings. Um, instead, it allows you to build more synthetic refineries per state. Um, and what does that mean? If you go in here um, and you build a synthetic refinery, if you wanna build a synthetic refinery to produce you some oil, then uh, you can only build one per state if you are at research level one. If you research uh, another level in the synthetic refinery tree, then you can build two per state and so on. So um, the efficiency does not go up. So if you are a big country um, or if you plan on getting a lot of uh, states like Germany, uh, like for Germany, it is nearly worthless, not worth it at all to go and uh, research more of this um, synthetic oil thing because it doesn't increase the efficiency, it just lets you build more. Just uh, keep that in mind if you are basing your strategy around going for synthetic oil. Let's stay with the synthetic refineries for a moment. What is the most important resource if you are playing a European um, country? Did you say oil? Wrong, it is rubber. If you have a look at the resource map and you pan around Europe, you'll see that there is quite a bit of oil, especially over here in, in uh, Romania, and then a lot, of, a lot of it over here in the Caucasus. Um, but there's not a lot of rubber to be had. There's some rubber over here, and uh, there's some rubber over here in Liberia, but that is about it. So you will be limited by rubber, way more than oil and uh, 
then you might want to keep in mind that synthetic refineries not only produce five oil, but also two rubber. And rubber is fairly important. You can see that I have built a lot of synthetic refineries over here already. And um, you need rubber to produce your fighters. Most notably, they need quite a bit of rubber. But you also need it for your motorized infantry. And you also need it for your mechanized infantry. So rubber is pretty important and very difficult to get in Europe. So if you plan on going for motorized infantry or even if you plan on having an air force, consider going for synthetic refineries, even though you might not need the oil. We already talked about combat with in an earlier tip, but there's still something to be said on the subject. And that is um, that I want to make um, a case for smaller combat widths over bigger combat widths. So um, as I already told you, a normal battle has a combat width of 80 and with each additional attack direction um, you gain 40 more combat width. So why not make your divisions um, with a combat width of 40, which might seem ideal. Well, the reason for that is your support battalions. If you have a normal battle with a combat width of 80, um, and you send in a division that has a combat width of 80, you are profiting of uh, by five support units. If you use my um, combat width 20 divisions, you can use four divisions at the same time and profit from the benefits of um, 20 support units. And I think that is a pretty, a pretty good point um, for going small on the combat width. You might be tempted to pump up one division and uh, filling out all these nice things down here, but it actually isn't really um, the, winning, the winning strategy in my mind. So um, going for 20 seems to be um, the most efficient. Just build more divisions instead of bigger divisions. One useful thing that I found out a bit um, later in my playthroughs is that um, tanks actually have tank variants that you can research over here. So um, if you have a look at, let's say, the Panzer IV, you can see that there are three symbols on the side and these are also research variants. So if you go for this one, then you get an anti-tank um, Panzer based on the Panzer IV. If you go for this one, you get a self-propelled um, artillery on the base of the Panzer IV. And if you go for that one, then you get a anti-air Panzer on the base of the Panzer IV. And these are all separate um, options. They do take um, less time, but you still have to research them. And they definitely do have their uses. Um, so having self-propelled artillery is... Um, they are a fair bit stronger than the normal artillery. If you have a look at it, these guys are putting out 92 soft attack. If we go to our improved artillery over here, these guys are putting out 40% soft attack. Um, I mean, yes, you can research some of the bonuses, but even the next better um, artillery puts out only 50 soft attack. And these guys are limited to a speed of um, four while the um, propelled, uh, self-propelled artillery, you can basically put them in your tank divisions and they have the same speed as um, your other medium tanks. So researching some of these can be quite beneficial. Just keep in mind um, that this is the way uh, that you do it. There are also some other variants that you can research. For example, if you were to click on that one, you would get motorized rocket artillery based on that, based on that thing. So. Um, yeah, keep in mind that there are more research options than initially appear. Um, in a similar fashion, these symbols are is the same the same type of plane, but um, specialized for being carried around on um, aircraft carriers. So yeah, hope that helps. So one of the things that has worked really well for me, especially against the Soviet Union and some of the other Eastern powers is giving my infantry divisions some armored units to up their um, hardness. So um, 
There are two types of attacks in Hearts of Iron 4. You might know that there's a soft attack against soft targets, um, basically humans, and there's a hard attack um, attack against um, everything that is armored, like uh, tanks and stuff. And I have basically given this infantry divisions. I've taken this row of infantry units out of there and instead uh, given them a light tank and given them two medium self-propelled artillery. And these guys pack a hell of a punch, 92 soft attack. And uh, I mean, they're not going to be able to use their speed. These tanks are way faster than the other, uh, than the infantry units. And the division is always limited by the slowest unit in there. Um, but they definitely um, help the survivability of this division and also give them a lot more soft attack. So that is something that I can only recommend. One of the things that I found out um, rather recently and which would have been very valuable to me if I have had found it out earlier is that you can use your army experience in increments um, for creating variants. What does it mean? Well, I, if I wanted to um, create a variant of my medium tank too, which will cost me army experience, um, then I can upgrade that variant. So um, instead of always having to go um, from my medium tank, from the basic medium tank, I can upgrade the variant and keep the upgraded stats. You are going to pay more and more um, points for each uh, upgrade point, um, but you're going to keep that. So um, even though you are capped at 500 experience, you can really go all in for one type of uh, unit. So I could basically pump this thing up to the max um, well, maybe not the engine, because we aren't really that keen on speed. We are limited by our uh, mechanized infantry. But if I were to up the armor and the reliability, then I could use my 465 army experience to create a variant B of my medium tank that basically uh, keeps all the good things of variant A and gets the additional... Um, bonus of that and then I could go up to variant C and also put up the engine and by that I would gain all the benefits so you can really try to max out one variant of a thing that you that you use a lot and uh, that you want to continue to keep using. Hooray! You made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, then please leave me a like. If you have any questions or if you have any useful tips that other people might find useful, then drop a comment. And uh, if you want to see more tips videos um, for Paradox games and other, other strategy games, or if you want to see some Let's Plays, then please consider subscribing to this channel. I hope I see you in one of my other series. Thanks and bye bye.